financial breakthrough. Now, this is a topic a lot of people love to talk about, especially in the health wealth circle. I'm not one of those. But your finances are sort of closely linked with your spiritual walk as well. Um, part of the reason is when you have financial stress going on, you are just so taken up with the financial stress that you have. Some people end up picking up multiple jobs and that just makes their relationships suffer. Their children don't get to see them and you don't get to see your children and it just it's just a big mess. Um, and among believers, this is something that we should be able to take control of our life. Um, Paul, I believe in the book of um, Philippines, if I'm not mistaken, he says, I can do all things through Christ. And that verse particularly refers to the finances. He goes, I know how to manage with little. I know how to manage with much. So I think we should take this matter seriously and consider what we can do. Now you can get into financial trouble uh, because of various reasons. Some of those are out of control. Um, health issues can land you in financial uh, troubles. Um, job loss can cause financial issues. Marriage breakdown can cause financial issues. Um, but again, we can plan for those things and mitigate loss. Uh, I'm not in support of marriage breakdown. I'm not in support of divorce. The scripture says God hates divorce, so that's out of the equation. Uh, for those of us who don't fall in any of these categories, my question is, can God help in your financial issues? Answer is yes. Um, why we should think like that? Because in the scripture it says, do not worry about tomorrow. And God gives an example of all the sparrows, the field, and um, uh, the vegetation. He goes, you know, I take care of all of them. How much more are you valuable? So as a child of God, you're valuable in the sight of God. And he does care about your, your problems are his problems. If you really walk according to will, his will and love him and serve him and seek him. And um, one of the main things I would say is pray and ask God to guide you. I think that will, that will solve a lot of problems. Before you go into any financial advisor and run into a social worker or someone to find some way out, Sit down and pray. I tell you from experience that God can really help. You will find the example of Elisha and the, uh, the widow of the prophet. With his, I think, two children, she comes to Elisha and asks for help. And the man of God gives the guidance about what, how, how she should, what she should do. And they got out of debt. That's just one example. Now, another thing I want to stress is set your mind on things above. I think that would solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. Um, a lot of us can get in, get into a lot of trouble if we fix, fix our eyes on things of this world. So it will be all about material possessions. What's the next? What's the best? What's the fastest? What's the greatest? What's the grandest? Oh, this house is not good enough. This car is not good enough. This job is not good enough. This wife is not good enough. I mean, you know, the list is endless. So setting your minds on things about can actually help us to stop making the stupid decisions that we make which can financially uh, ruin us and for some people it may be okay but are we supposed to use our finances in such a way that you know we'll be like that rich fool that Jesus spoke about he had a big harvest he said you know what I'll just knock down the small barn I'll build a bigger barn I'll store up all this I can live it live off of this for the rest of my life Jesus called him the rich fool we don't want to be one of those. Um, so by not buying things that you cannot afford, I'll get to that in a bit, but another thing that I want to stress about, so I mentioned about praying and asking God for guidance, and I mentioned about setting our minds on things about which can stop us from making some of these stupid decisions. The next thing I want to talk about is don't steal from God. In the New Testament, you don't read, I mean, I don't see tithing. All that you have belongs to the Lord. But again, end of the day, it comes down to cheerfully giving. And sometimes you may not be in a position to give even 10%. So pray and ask God for guidance. It's, it's not about being legalistic about, you know, your, your 10%. Make sure you give your 10%. No, some people, some of us should be giving a lot more than 10%. And here's another verse. Let me, uh, you know, just if you will remember this. Um, those who sow sparingly will also reap sparingly. And those who 
uh, give much, you know, there is a blessing. There is a blessing. Um, and it's not about giving to get. Forget about that. Um, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't think in that way. I don't want to think in that way. Um, another thing I want to mention is spend below your purchasing power. And I know here in the U.S. they just push this credit. Oh, your credit card is also included in your purchasing power. This loan is also included in your purchasing power. Please, child of God, you cannot afford it. Don't go for it. Don't go for it. Um, don't get what you can't afford. Live within your means. I mean, these are simple things, but for some reason... We missed, we missed the mark. We follow the people of the world. We follow uh, our next door neighbors. You know, we're trying to keep up with the, uh, with the, with the, with the neighbors or even in, in church members. There is sometimes competition. Oh, this guy has that car, so I'm going to get this car. And do we really need to? Should we be wasting our money like that? Um, another thing, differentiate between need and want. Not everything that we see, we really need. There are a lot of things that I want, but I don't really need. So as a, as a child of God, I'm trying to see if we can get to that mindset of setting our minds on things above, things of God, that our focus will not be so much on ourselves. So when our focus shifts from ourselves to God, I guess this problem will be sorted out. And teach our children, let's teach our children to differentiate between need and wants. Um, I'm trying to instill that in my seven-year-old and four-year-old. I don't think my, my four-year-old is getting it. Um, but nevertheless, um, let's get out of the borrower mentality. That's another thing I want to mention. There's like so much of this borrower mentality. Oh, you know, if you don't have it, let's hear a credit card here. You can get a credit card here. You can get a loan. Um, let's get out of that. Um, save up for a rainy day, six months, a year. You don't have to ask anyone for help. Just put some money aside. Um, and my prayer is that you will become a giver, not a receiver. Cause the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. So like I said before, financial struggles can actually lead to spiritual troubles as well along the road. So let's, as believers, um, let us live walk wisely. Let us make better decisions. Let us not be just borrowers. Let us be, uh, let's get to a position where we are able to be generous and give to others. And it will be a great blessing. Another quick thing before, before I stop for young people, please don't go get degrees that won't get you a job. You may like the topic, you may like the subject, but if it doesn't land you a decent job where you can earn a decent living to pay off your student loan, that is a big mess you're getting yourself into. Pray, ask God to guide you, and I tell you, God will give you guidance. Choose your subjects, choose your degrees wisely. Do not waste your years, do not waste your money on student loans. Let me say a prayer. Father, I pray for all these folks who are watching and some of them probably are facing financial difficulties. And Lord, our God, uh, you care about us. You love us. And Lord, you will help us when we ask you for help. And Lord, I pray that you will give uh, people wisdom. Uh, Lord, some of us may be struggling because of our own decisions. Father, we pray that you will give us wisdom to get out of the mess we are in. And that, Lord, you will help us to make wiser decision in future and lord i pray for those ones who did not uh intentionally get into uh, financial issues because of health reasons or job loss or whatever lord i pray that you will um open the doors of heaven and help our dear ones help them lord lord i pray that there will be food on the table i pray that lord their children will be provided for lord i pray that they will not lose their homes Lord, uh, while we live on this earth, we need some of these basic necessities of life. And I pray, Lord, your help upon uh, our people, especially in, uh, in America, Lord. A lot of people have lost jobs. And I pray that, Lord, they will be able to keep their homes and may not lose their homes and their families. Help, Lord. Help our nation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you.